Hi, welcome to a community learning tech recording. We've um, had a few requests recently for guides on how to set up Android tablets. Um, we've been sending out some Alcatel 10 inch devices to learners and we just wanted to run through very quickly how you get the thing set up from, from you and uh, what you need to do to make the best out of it. So um, without further ado, I'm just going to switch over and start looking at the device itself. So here we go, we've got an Alcatel 3T10, excitingly named. Um, very nice mid-range Android tablet, 10-inch um, screen, so it's a nice sort of same size as your a general iPad. Um, very good for doing some learning on. So I'm just going to pop it open. And those sweet, sweet unboxings. So in the box, as usual nowadays, very little in the way of instructions. And we have a charging block for USB. And we've got USB charging cable for micro USB and the tablet itself. I know how popular these things are on YouTube, so just do a very slow peel off the film on the front. Look at that. Lovely. There we go. So here we've got our tablet, we've got a camera, um, we've got speakers on both sides, cam on the back. And we've got the charging port on this left edge and um, we've got a headphone jack and microphone on the top volume controls and power button and on the bottom we've got um, another charging strip which we might be using and we've also got this little door here so for users who've been given um, sim cards so data that these tablets can take data directly and you just pop it into this little slot here um, as a micro, as a micro sim. So there we go and we will move on to the turning on. Okay and here we are back <coughs> with the device. I haven't done anything to it at all. Um, all I've done is just let it start up. So this is the first thing you see. It'd be very similar on most Android devices. So we've got a, a hello splash screen um, it's asking me for my country and the only thing we can do aside from that is we can do an emergency call which obviously we don't want to do um, that's only because like a, a mobile phone this device has a sim card so you could potentially make uh, emergency 909 calls with it so we're just going to hit start um, so if we had a, a mobile phone network it would connect to it now worth pointing out if you do have a sim card um, it is best to set it up on wi-fi if you do have that as well obviously it's going to be using more internet pulling down information pulling down so I'm just going to say skip and we're going to connect to Wi-Fi, there's my Wi-Fi um, and I'm just going to very quickly okay. okay so that brings us through to the copy apps and data screen so if we had an existing Android device now um, we could use the inbuilt tools to copy the, the existing applications and data that we've got on that device over to this new one also your contacts and your photos and things um, although that will often copy just from having a google account um, we're not going to do that this is actually the scope of what we're doing at the moment so we're just going to hit the don't copy button okay that will take us through to creating an account um, now i've already gone through on this device uh, but i have noticed there's a strange discrepancy between what you can do on a device what you can do on google's website so we'll we'll show you what you can do on here and then i'll mention there's a, a, an advantage to setting up on a on a separate device once it's already set up you can do it on this device as well once it's set up which is a bit strange um so anyway we can sign in with an existing um google account so we've already got an account with a google device i've already got a gmail account from somewhere feel free to use it here if not we have to create an account so hit create account uh, we've got the option of, uh, for you or for your child um, there's loads of really great guides online about having a separate child account um, it's you, you do need to have a proper account a, a non-child account first anyway to really get anything done so we'll focus on that so we can hit for myself and it's going to ask us for our first name and last name so put in first name and last name <laughs> Mine doesn't appear. There we go. Right, we'll ask for our um, gender 
and age and a fib um, is, you're more than welcome when you set up accounts to not give them the correct information the only issue is they use it for security purposes so um, you're often better to either give the correct information or you need to record what lies you've told to these providers and you can keep like a, a spreadsheet somewhere of what you've told them so you can actually remember what age you were when you signed up for these things which can get a bit confusing so i'm going to hit next okay so it's going to offer some options of addresses um, and you can create your own gmail address now this is where this setup is a bit of a letdown from setting up um, through the web browser um, if you're on a web browser google would offer you the option of using an existing email address so you could use a, a outlook address a yahoo address uh, and make that your gmail account so you'd still get all the emails from google would come to your personal address this doesn't let you do that i don't know why it's just one of those strange little quirks so for our purposes we'll just pick one of these at random um, we could always go in and change that afterwards so we create a password so i'm going to type in a password i'm going to pick a very good one and you let you all see it as well Let's I plan to never ever use this account okay um, so ask for a phone number the phone number is really handy because that's a really good way of you resetting your account also using for two-factor authentication so definitely worth putting a phone number um, let's get rid of this I'm going to skip for the time being so are you happy with this gmail account just say yes um, and then personalization is just it will run through what kind of things it's going to do for your google account so we'll just say express because it's faster um, basically saying how we use your data are we going to personalize adverts for you lots of stuff on there um, happy with that it's fine oops and then agree to all the masses of terms and conditions which change on a daily basis okay and now uh, the next question is google services so what it's going to ask you now is basically what things we want to turn on with our google account so um automatic backup to google drive so it'll back up lots of our information who we've called um well it says here we've got wi-fi passwords and contacts and one of the main reasons to use google backup which requires separate apps is for things like photos so also got uh, location data so things like google maps have automatically got access to knowing where you are um, scanning picks up where what wi-fi networks are nearby usage and diagnostic data is primarily most things will ask for this um, it's to track any problems or issues with the device um, and install updates and apps so by default it will update things for you that's obviously regardless you have to, have to accept that um, i would say generally speaking all these things are absolutely fine um, and both google and apple got very good now about asking for more fine-grained permissions when you install apps later so i hit accept i think i hit accept now um so protect your tablet so this is the password thing if you're only using this in the house and there's nobody else in the house i would say it doesn't really matter very much um, however if you've got children in the house you definitely want to have a, a small short pin on there um, if you're taking out definitely want a pin on there the the pattern unlock is where you draw shape um, not very secure just because it's easy to see what someone's doing from a distance it's also um, quite easy sometimes to see the sort of greasy finger marks making a shape on the screen um, password is a long very secure thing pins much shorter generally speaking the pin is going to be very acceptable okay secure startup so do you require your pin before it starts up um, almost doesn't matter to tend not to turn the device completely off but yes as well um, so set a screen lock and i'll just set a very secure four digit pin number don't use one two three four just pick you know you can pick your, your pin you use for um, your bank or something if you wanted to okay so now the next thing is google will try and set up its um, assistant so this is the uh, the bit where you say i'm not going to say it because it's going to set every device off in my room um, but the 
I'm going to say this so we can set them off. Okay, Google. Yeah, everything started flashing next to me. So that's just your way of talking to your device rather than you know, using your hands. So um, we can turn it on. To be honest, it's not much use on a tablet. I wouldn't say, so I'm saying no thanks. If you wanted to, you can say turn on and it will talk you through um, uh, a, a training procedure where you'll, you'll keep saying a set of words to it so it understands what you sound like. Okay. Okay, so we <laughs> because it's a, a mobile phone type device, it's, it's popping up with the ability to pay fast with Google Pay. Um, I'm going to skip that. We're not going to use this as a, a credit card. It'll be slightly awkward in shops. So at this point, we can add in other email accounts. You can always add in a new Gmail account now if you wanted. Um, and we do other things. We're not going to do anything else from here. We're going to try and get into the tablet itself. Okay, so terms and conditions, we hit finish. And there we go, we finally got through to the wallpaper of the device. Okay, so I've let the device uh, go to sleep, um, just to show you the sort of turning on process. So um, we've got our power button just up here. You see the device is already turning off by itself. So this is the normal behavior of a, an Android tablet, or indeed most tablets. So the way it works is we, we don't normally turn the things off completely. What we do is we just touch this button and that turns sort of wakes the device back up again. Now we could hold this button down and then you get the option here of powering off completely, um, restarting or taking a screenshot. So you can power this down completely to conserve battery but the device will still go for days um, without that. So one tap of the power button, you get um, updates so you know you can see here the device is still setting itself up. Um, any e emails, um, if you install um, the It's Learning app, if you install Google Classroom, that sort of thing, um, they will pop up there. Time, and this little icon there to show it's locked at the bottom. So just get my, my lights in the way of it. Um, so to open the device up, we just swipe up, and it asks for that PIN number we put in earlier. Luckily, it's a nice, simple PIN. Just hit tick, and we're back into the device, as we were a second ago. So, um, for most versions of Android, this is going to be the same, you know, many years now um, and even the current versions work almost exactly the same way there's just differences between different devices but generally speaking if you pull down from the top you get a quick action menu and what you get is usually a double stage one so if I pull down again we get more options okay um, on some devices Apple devices in particular um, but also with some some older Android devices there's different menus so on one side, if you pull it on the right, you'll get the menu. If you pull it on the left, you'll get all these things about what's going on. Um, but most of them now they're combined. So you can see we've got our email here. Um, and we've got some quick actions. So we can archive the email, get rid of it. We can reply to the email straight from here. And with most items, we can also slide to one side. Um, either slide all the way like that to get rid of it, or you can slide partly to have some controls. So you can say, go into the options and say, um, snooze this for a while, don't remind me just now, or I don't want to see these sort of notifications anymore. So clear those across. Um, our quick actions menu is great. It's a way we can easily get to things like turning Wi-Fi on and off. Um, we can turn Bluetooth on and off. We've got do not disturb. Um, screen rotate, so automatically when you turn these devices around, I don't want to do that, there we go, the screen will rotate around. Um, should go almost any direction. We've got battery saver. Um, here's our SIM card icon, so that would, which you can probably barely see actually on the on the device. Let's see if I can focus on it. There we go. So um, that would allow us to change our data settings for our built-in um, SIM card. As you can see, it says mobile data, no SIM card. So if we wanted to make sure we were using Wi-Fi in a hotspot or at home, um, you could press that button, and it would turn off the internal SIM card. So you can protect, save your data. And you can see from the bottom we've got an extra page. Um, it's a fantastic little cast option. So cast uh, links into a whole series of other devices um, from Google. And that would be things like um, TVs, Google, I, can't call them, I think it's just called Google Cast. Um, and it's basically a way of streaming wirelessly the video off your screen. So it can be very handy. 
little brightness slider and we've a few other bits and pieces but the main important thing here is there's a shortcut to settings um, so there's a settings icon on your desktop but if that gets moved there's always a setting icon here and if I touch that that will take us through to the settings page where you can do loads of stuff inside the tablet um, and if someone you know when the tutors ask you to make a change to one of your settings um, the easiest way to find settings in Google now is to go straight to the top. It's the same in uh, Apple devices. I can just send a keyboard app. And then we can search for something. So if we're changing the Bluetooth settings, we can start typing Bluetooth. And you know, after about a week, it will realize what we're doing. Very impressive. Okay, that should work. <laughs> I suspect that's probably because it's still setting up. It's, um, Let's try. Let's try something else. It's got a definite name on it. Um, let's try app. No results. Okay, that's not breaking very well. We'll come back to that. Um, as I said, down at the bottom again, we've got back home. Ah, there we go. It's working now. It's just taking an awfully long time to index. Should we try Bluetooth again? There we go. Bluetooth. Ah, there we go. Ah, I'm going too quick. This is a common common problem. So Bluetooth, turn blue, and you've got options here. Bluetooth address, Bluetooth scanning. So it will just instantly find the bit of the settings that you want. What you'll see as well is um, as I was typing, the back button here changes to a down icon. Um, and that's just to show you instead of going back, it will remove the keyboard if it's getting in your way. So the three options at the bottom, we've got back, which just takes you back one step. So it'll take you back again, back out to the main menu. Home will always take you here. So it doesn't matter how many steps you go into something. If I hit that button there, straight back to home menu. And then this one is, I don't know what the proper name for it is, but it's called, it's a menu button or a quick actions button. So what it will do, if I open up a web browser, accept, accept, or you seem to have to accept or use Google's web browser. If I press this now, I'll have two. And this sometimes looks a bit different. On some devices, it'll be like cards across the screen. Um, but effectively, it shows you all the things running in the background. And each one's got a little X in the corner. So you can say, I don't want settings anymore. Um, swipe away also to get rid of them. The benefit of this is if some app locks up, so you've got a problem, your web browser's not working, you can swipe the web browser away and then you can reload it. So if it's since gone wrong, it's a great way of restarting. Otherwise, if you go back and go back again, it immediately resumes where it left off. So if you've got a problem, it won't go away. So that's the, the sort of general interface. The most important app we need to look at is this one here. It's Google Play, which is how you get all your apps. And so the app you can choose it's first time it's loading, which additional search services for your device. This is a thing mandated by the EU. Um, so if you wanted to, you can have DuckDuckGo, Privacy Browser, and <clears throat> Yahoo and stuff. Personally, not interested, happy with Google. Um, you can choose additional web browsers. Um, there are some benefits to um, Opera, um, I think UC as well, it's in terms of if your child is at school, um, they may find that beneficial um, in terms of accessing um, different content that the schools might provide. Um, I forget the name, there's a, a, a browser, I think it's called Dolphin Browser, um, which actually lets you use Flash. Um, that's a topic for another video. So I'm going to say no thanks. And here we go, we're into the apps section. So if we were downloading Google Classroom or It's Learning, we just go to apps. And we would type it in. So it comes up straight away. And you know, we make sure this is the right, the right bit of software we're looking at. It is. And we just hit store. Um, worth bearing in mind, this never works smoothly when you first get a new tablet. Um, so we're going to skip. So the first thing it's going to actually do is have a, a, a method of payment. Um, I'm only planning to download free applications, so I don't need to give it a method of payment. So I'm just going to say skip. 
Um, it'll ask you for your password as well every time your um, Gmail password, every time you spend money. So there is some degree of security on it. It's another reason to make sure your password is good. Um, don't let your kids know it so they can't go and splash money on um, microtransactions and silly games and things on there. Um, this has worked really well. I find I'm pushing on a lot of the non-branded tablets. This is a, an Alcatel branded tablet. It's, you know, I think it's made by a company called TCL, very big company. Works very, very nicely out of the box. Um, on the cheaper Android tablets, the sort of Chinese ones that haven't really got a name on them, um, this can take a very long time before it's able to actually let you install an application. Um, you can open the application right from, right from there. Okay, now it's installed the app, um, and as you see, you've got you know, multiple screens. Um, you can long press on a icon to move it around and adjust it as you want. Um, if you want to get rid of something, you can. I'm going to do it with Gmail. Uh, what can I get rid of? There. You if I long press on this one, you'll see that I've got a, a, a um, trash can over here. I can drop it over the trash can. If I let go now, it will uninstall the app and get rid of it. You could also uninstall the app back from um, the Play Store as well. So that would have said uninstall there, look. So that concludes this first little section looking at setting up uh, a tablet.